WOCA. Ocala. All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Some of our local organizations have like trademark or signature events. And there's at least one church in town that I know that has several different signature events. The one that probably comes to mind for most people when they think of the Druid Hills United Methodist Church is the Pumpkin Patch, which just ended. Or maybe you remember the Easter Tableau. Is that what you call it, John? The Tableau? And you have a Christmas event and also the Block Party, which has become another signature event of the Druid Hills United Methodist Church. Uh, John Batten is here. John has been with the church for as long as I've known the church, and uh, he's the coordinator of the uh, bl- church block party and Pastor Brian Sanderson is joining us a good looking young guy he is uh, the new pastor I don't know how new you are for the church um, but it's the first time I'm meeting you so good morning to both of you good thank morning. you how are, how are you how long have you been with the church four whole months four whole months yes oh wow wow <laughs> how's it working out John right very well. <laughs> <laughs> you still here? Hey! <laughs> yes, it's not an easy job being a pastor. I mean, and, and you're walking into a very active church. Yes, indeed. I mean, this church is always doing something. Yes. It's, it's amazing to watch. And, uh, and it, they're a part of the community in probably like no other church I know. Oh, that's good to hear. Don't you think, John? I mean, we you, have, we you guys have people do from the forest out, out in the shores. Um, and coming uh, from the west end of the county, we've got uh, uh, folks from it seems like all over the county yeah. that are uh, uh, regulars at the church. From what I've seen, I'm, I'm an outsider looking in, but it looks like a the, the definition of a church is not the building, it's the people. And it looks like you've, you've uh, adapted a, a congregation that really works together to make things happen for the church. So how was the uh, pumpkin patch? How did that go? You guys do this year was our second best year that second we've ever best. ever had in wow. terms of uh, of uh, sales, and uh, and it's the best year we've ever had in terms of s- lack of spoilage of the pumpkins. Oh, so, really? So uh, we had, we didn't sell as many pumpkins as our record year, but uh, we uh, had uh, better sales from what we did sell. Because of the lack of spoilage, is that the right? weather was with us all year. All did you have any uh, leftover fall. pumpkins when it was all over? No, no, we sold out. Uh, no? we, f- we finished up last Wednesday or Thursday, uh, one of those two days. Was wow, the sellout day. Wow. We actually received a third less of a load. We had a, a full semi load and two thirds, which they had to send a third of a load somewhere down south. But if we would have had that other third, we would have sold it. Uh, Assume too. There's that Madison, Florida accent. That's it. So where is Madison exactly? <laughs> oh, 45 minutes east of Tallahassee. Oh, okay. Next to Monticello, a little north of Taylor County. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, nice to get to know you. So uh, how, how did you end up being a pastor? What was your life line oh, like? How, how long is our spot? <laughs> 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 I, I, I was going to be a teacher. I went to school. We still to, are. I had to study education. And, yeah, and yeah. it was at a, a Baptist college. And the pastor where I was attending church as a new Christian thought I, he, he perceived that I might be called to ministry before I did. <laughs> so I was just there studying, going to chapel services, and began to hear a call to ministry. And right. went into youth ministry at the United Methodist Church in Madison, Florida. Did that for 12 years while sensing that call to pastoral ministry and just kind of kept putting it off and putting it off and finally surrendered. Went to seminary, Asbury, and... Uh, Orlando did that for four years and wow, wow. sent me to Druid Hills. And uh, your mom and dad, they still live up there in Madison? My dad does, yes. Your dad does? Yep. And uh, you, you have brothers, sisters? What's I have a half-brother and uh, Brandon, which is, I hear, somewhere near Tampa. And Tampa. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not too far away. My daughter commutes there sometimes, so yeah, not too far. So are you, anybody else in the ministry besides yourself? Nope, I was the only one. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> well, good. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. So the the, uh, the block party is coming up, and the first question people ask, how much is it? It's totally free. Free. Everything is free. It's amazing. And when you say everything, what does that mean? That means uh, all the activities, uh, food and drink. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, un- 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 unlike some years when we have pumpkins to give away, this year we won't have any pumpkins. Oh, wow. I know, it's amazing. When people hear that it's free, they go, ah, yeah, but they get you with the food. No, not this church. You provide the food for free. Wow. 
What, what are the numbers usually like at the block party? How many people normally show up? Well, it can vary significantly from year to year. Weather, of course, is a factor. Where and when the Gators are playing is also <laughs> yeah. a factor. Are they playing this Saturday? Uh, <laughs> yes, but it's an early game. Oh, it's uh, an so, early game. So uh, if someone insists on watching the entire game, they can get in on, on half the last half of the block party still. The block party is from 2 to 5 this coming Saturday. That's right. Uh, at the church, and I don't want to presume that every listener knows where Druid Hills is. We're on uh, 17th, Southeast 17th Street. Uh, at the intersection of 17th and Lake Weir. And, and what's scheduled to be there this year? What, what is the food? Hot dogs? Hot, yes, By the way, yes. is a hot dog a sandwich? We, we had this debate this morning. Yeah, this I is a listening. debate. Yes. Were, were you listening? <laughs> a hot dog is a sandwich? Well, let's define sandwich. Yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is, it, is it being squeezed between something? Then maybe, <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. But okay. I'm thinking like, you know, it looks more like a taco shape. It's more so. like it's laying in something. Yeah. Yeah, it's more like a coffin. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Yes, I like it's, that. It's a memorial like for... Like a taco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that explanation. <laughs> so uh, it is, it is uh, uh, just the hot dog and the chips and uh-huh. uh, a variety of veterans. Sodas and things? Uh, vet, uh, beverages. Yeah, yeah. For How are you doing, John? You look all right. You look good. Well, I'm, I'm getting up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, kind of like Roy, our pumpkin patch... Uh, uh, Colonel is. Uh, uh, we're we're getting to the point where uh, someone's going to have to take over in a few oh, years. Oh, really? Really? Is it? And, and, I, and I need to. I do need to say that I'm a co-coordinator, w- along with Bob Green, who handles the food operations and uh, and getting that. I just handle the the cocoa the cocoa ordinator. Right. The cocoa ordinator. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time we saw this little girl? Robin and I were playing, Robin and I do music, so we're playing down in uh, Cape Canaveral, Mm -hmm. and the little girl was holding her daddy's hand, and she goes, we're going to a cocoa beach. (laughs) (laughs) And what's she picturing in her mind? No sand, just lots of cocoa. Bring your milk. (laughs) So, Pastor, I have a question for you. That's kind of a serious question. I mean, what John was just expressing, these getting up in age, is, is that a struggle right now, bringing young people into a church? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, young guys like you, over, yeah. you, you could be an asset in that department. I, I would imagine that young people look to a young pastor. Yeah, we're trying. You know, we, it's, there's a culture with young families where we're just wore out and busy from the weekly activities, and then on the weekend, you, you have so many, you know, travel sports mm-hmm. and things yeah, that yeah. the culture has changed. Even when I was a youngster, we had Little League Baseball, but... You know, we had Sundays off. <laughs> yeah, right. And right. Wednesday we played football. I played basketball, baseball, and we would always have those days off to if you wanted to go to church or mm-hmm. whatever. But now, oh gosh, you know, you would hate to miss that time of practice and training. And we mm-hmm. we found a book from 1859, I think it was, and it was a book that was uh, the topic was the um, the antidote to the labor curse because in the book of Genesis, you you'd know this better than me, but there's a curse put on humankind that we all must labor because of Adam and Eve's sin, right? Am I yeah, getting this you're, right? You're getting it. Chapter okay. 3. Okay, thank you. He knows. So, so, but, but the book in 1859, the guy's, well, the book oh. is titled The Antidote to the Labor Curse. So you go 40 pages before he finally gets to it. And he actually uses the Bible to say that the antidote is right in the Ten Commandments. Mm. The, the, uh, remember the Sabbath. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's your day. That's your day. You don't have to work. That's it. It's holy. You Set do. Because it's your job. Right? Yeah. Well, they're, they're gracious <laughs> enough to let me have an alternative. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the wonderful things about the block party is you get people from all ethnicities that come. You have uh, older people. You have... Uh, especially the young children, but you also expose them to the helpers in town, like the first responders. That's right. Yes, we, we do have, uh, uh, there'll be a fire truck there, as there, there is every year. And, uh, and m- on more than one occasion, the truck has had to leave. Mm-hmm. And then it returns. Oh, my gosh. Oh, really? Yeah, on the call? Mission. So right. that, uh, we're always prepared for that. And the police will be there with uh, their handouts. And then also uh, we have the uh, Morningside Masonic Lodge doing the uh, sophisticated um, the child uh, preparation of a CD on wow. each child to include its voice. And incidentally, th- uh, they also do 
seniors who have dementia and a family member brings in the the senior and the, they give the same routine to the senior so that if he or she walks away right, from right, yeah. wherever they are, they have something to give the police right away that identifies um, really? the, the person and uh, his voice and all that. What wow. a great idea, yeah. not and just for children. My late brother's widow recently had an occasion. She's up in Panama City, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, one of my nieces was telling me about the incident that they had. Oh, really? And uh, she was found quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, every once in a while there's something in the news yeah. about some yeah. individual who's walked away and they yeah. find yeah. them counties away or maybe even a state away. Mm-hmm. Because he not, and and not knowing, you know, amazing how far they how can to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll take a little break uh, in in the studio with us, Pastor Brian Sanderson, the pastor of the Druid Hills United Methodist Church. John Batten is with him. John is the co coordinator of the Druid Hills United Methodist Church block party. Everybody knows the block party. It's always fun. You got to get the kids to this event. It's this coming Saturday, and it is from uh, from two p.m. to five p.m. Is that right? Correct. And we'll tell you more about it when we come back. So we'll take a little break and be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, sunshine mixed with clouds and quite warm high, 85 to 89. Hardly cloudy tonight, low 69 well inland, 75 along the coast. But tomorrow and Saturday, times of sun and clouds. There can be a shower with thunderstorm in spots, mainly during the afternoon hours of each day. The high will stay 85 to 89. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Central Florida Eye Institute is the area's leader in laser vision correction. From high-definition refraction surgery and LASIK vision correction to custom cataract, glaucoma, and diabetic treatment, you can count on Dr. Crowley and his effective, friendly staff to provide you with the quality care you deserve. Call 352-237-8400 for an appointment or more information. That number again is 352-237-8400. Looking forward to service your vision needs. I'm having a hot flash, a tropical hot flash. My personal summer is really a bummer. I'm having a hot flash. Menopause the Musical, the off-Broadway sensation, proudly presents the Survivor Tour. Coming to the Curtis M. Phillips Center November 11th. $2 per ticket sold will be donated to Susan G. Komen through June 30th, 2016. For tickets, visit performingarts.ufl.edu. I'm having a hot flash. Woo! Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. And it's bad thoughts about messing up or not being good enough that kill confidence. So tell yourself, you can do it. Blowing bubbles can help us fall asleep. Because it's like a deep breathing exercise helping to calm our body and mind. And since blowing bubbles feel silly, it helps the mind move on from worries that might keep us awake. So throw back some cranberry juice, improve your heart health within 24 hours. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. The Florida State Seminoles travel to Clemson, South Carolina in a game that could decide the bid for the national championship tournament. Will it be Clemson or Florida State representing the ACC? Find out by tuning in this Saturday at 3.30 for Florida State Clemson. Brought to you by Triangle Sales, your local distributor of Bud Light in the ocala Marion County community. Florida State football this Saturday at 3.30. Don't miss it. On The Source. What are the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking? Will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Posenet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, the source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. All right, um, 11 minutes now before 10 o'clock. It must be the end of the year. It must be November because the block party at Druid Hills is happening this Saturday. Before we move forward, I need to thank Dr. Thomas Crowley because you might have just heard his ad from Central Florida Eye Institute. If you need any eye care needs taken care of, this is the place to go. They do it all, whether it's something as basic as getting an eye exam and perhaps some eyeglasses or maybe contact lenses. 
they can handle that, of course, but they also deal with uh, laser surgery, retinal surgery, glaucoma treatments, uh, LASIK surgery, cataract surgery. It goes on and on and on. Go to Central Florida Eye Institute for your eye care needs. They're right across the street, sort of kind of from the Paddock Mall. I don't mean 200. They're across the uh, 32nd Avenue over there. The address to the Central Florida Eye Institute is 3133 Southwest 32nd Avenue. Their phone number is 237-8400, and their website is centralfloridaeye.com. In the studio with us, Pastor Brian Sanderson and John Batten. They're here to represent an event happening this Saturday over at the Druid Hills United Methodist Church, of which Pastor Sanderson is the pastor for the past four months. Uh, so this is, this is a first for you for the block party. Um, it, it is a, a really fun event. I mean, you know, I don't know what the... Do you have a train this year? You yes. Guys, you have a train? Yes. That's always fun. The kids love the train. And the climbing wall. You have a climbing we wall? We have the climbing wall uh, this year back. For a number of years, we didn't have it because of the, the cost, but uh, we, we do have it this year. Oh, good, mm-hmm. good. Pastor's suggestion. And uh, hopefully that'll provide uh, an activity for uh, the more of the teenagers who... Uh, are looking for something. They love that. The they love the train climb. and the bounce house. And and the they get, that gets them just coming in. They see that and they, they stop by. That'll, that's a big draw, I think, to see that. You know, the little kids probably like the train a lot, the right? bounce house and the slide. Oh, yeah, the yes. inflatable slide. <laughs> it's unbelievable how kids line up for that. And, yeah. and they have as much fun going up, climbing up that thing, as they do coming down. So, now, Robin, <laughs> I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. If if uh, Pastor Sanderson and John and I were all trying to climb that wall, mm-hmm. who do you think would win? I think Pastor would win. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you may be surprised. Well, he's played you look, basketball you look like and he's all physical <laughs> stuff, so I think he'd win. <laughs> I think you got yeah, him red. Look at him. Let's try that. Let's try it. Let's see. I, I don't think I'd get past the first step. I think. <laughs> Well, first of all, that little cable that prevents you from dying would probably break, and I'd probably die. So you'd be at my funeral. And uh, and John, I don't know how good you are at climbing walls, but I uh, when we did have it a number of years back, I tried and got up about two thirds of the way. You did. That's about it. Well, that's awesome Good for you. That's awesome. Have that's you tried, cool. Pastor? Have you tried to do this? I don't think I have. You would Ever remember. I don't, a rock wall. I'm, no. I'm sure you would remember. Right? No, I think I would. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Now there's a challenge. You have to know my past. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. He's got an advantage over all of us, though, with his longer reach. There you go. Yeah, and that's right. Fewer pounds. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Yeah, able to, to climb. Uh, you've got something listed as a high striker. Yes, that's what the old that? uh, carnival... Um, a sledgehammer that oh, rings really? the bell. Oh, really? Oh, really? That's what they call it. Now, hmm. an ice striker. now I'll challenge you on that one. Yeah. I'll and, try that one. And I can ring the bell on that one. Can you? Yeah. yeah. Do you give out prizes? No. For that one? Is Just there a the trick to that? Is that a uh, trick? or I mean, is it really the strength or is it the leverage? What is the, the way that works? It's hitting it solidly, I think. Because I've seen some young kids ring the bell, but they hit it just right. Oh this. really? Yeah. Oh really? They bring it up over their head and slam it down, and hmm. they hit it just right, and they'll go up there. No, you're good at that. Pastor, what is what is your vision for the church? You're you're new. You must have some ideas what you want to do. Well, they've had this ongoing vision that's, uh, you know, to serve Christ by loving, learning, and leading, and and I just really wanted to get in that stream of the vision and just kind of go with it and and make sure that everyone's on board with that, understands it, and to re- you know just realize that. We're God's church, you know. We're we're on mission, mm-hmm. regardless of where we are. We're on mission to, you know, help folks become the best people that God's created them to be. You know, all ages, genders, colors. Mm-hmm. You know, to you be, know God's, e- be God's people. Do you find it easy to talk to people who believe in God about God, and yet, and, and that the people who you really want to talk to are the ones who don't believe in God? So, is that harder to talk to them? We we actually studied this last night. Uh, we did a. I went back to one of my favorite theologians. He's a contemporary guy, Rob Bell, and like he's he's kind of loved and hated for some of his views. But we we were talking about the very breath that's given to us, mm-hmm. uh, and the the ancients, the Jewish people believed that it's, you know it's the ruach, and you, you use Yahweh Yod Hey Va Hey, which is the 
Hebrew for Yahweh, Yahweh, it's actually these breathing marks, sounds. They're not really pronunciated letters or really? other Hebrew no. letters in the alphabet. So when they would actually breathe the name of God, you know, ancients, some of them would think it's you know, blasphemy to even say God's name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we were, were toiling with this idea of, uh, well, someone says there is no God, they're actually saying there is no God, but with that same breath, they are breathing life, which is God. You know, so I just found that pretty profound that is, that to think profound, that yeah. with the same words we use to claim there is no God, we are actually proclaiming God, <laughs> life. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But well, when some, somebody who says no, there's not even intelligent design, they they don't even want to grasp that part of it. I I often say, well, what is intelligence? I mean, if there's no intelligence then where did it come from? I mean, how could they, there's intelligence in a tree. Mm -hmm. I mean, it knows how to grow. And it, I don't know how it knows, but it does. Yeah. Will you be making yourself available on Saturday to speak to different people? Because sometimes people are going through something not so good in their life. And then if they see an opportunity like this for a block party, knowing a pastor's there, they can just like show up without an appointment and just seek you out and Absolutely. chat. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and back to one -on -one. Your, your point, you know, Stephen Hawkins, one of the foremost contemporary atheists a lot of folks refer to and talk about, he has something going on in his life, you know. I think he's upset. I think he's upset with the way life turned out. He's mad at God. He once believed in God. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that about him. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, I don't know. Could, I don't always back up. You know, you can always back up. But I always, I was like, for example, the, I saw the two roaches mating this morning. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they're dead now, but but I saw them this morning. <laughs> I'm glad. And, and I thought to myself, now wait a minute. <laughs> we had this discussion about 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 um, the reason there were two sexes in the first place. I mean, God could have easily said, you know what? Just let them multiply. They don't need two. You don't need two. Let's just right. They're bugs. So why? I mean, why? If it was all just a, a big bang thing and, and everything came together. I mean, there are asexual animals, right? They just yes. split. Mm -hmm. They don't need a partner. So why didn't God do that for the cows and the humans and everything? You know, just whoop. There's another one. Whoop. Here we go. Right. Right. And we would all look the same. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I was told. The reason there are different sexes is so that you don't look like your father, your mother. You don't look like the one who made you. Because if there was only one, then you would look exactly. We'd all look exactly the same. Yeah, that's so I said, wait a minute. That cockroach looks exactly the same. <laughs> So that theory doesn't even apply. There's, there's got to be a reason in God's planning. I know it's a silly sounding topic, but you think about it. Why it's did not. God make two of everything except for amoebas yeah. <laughs> and paramecium's or whatever? But why? I mean, you think of it. That's intelligent right there. Well, hey, you, you referred to Genesis 2, and we look back at the creation story. Think about Adam looking around, right? The first mm -hmm. created being, and these animals are... are you know, multiplying after their own kind, yeah. you know, I'd yeah. get a little lonely too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what about a, a wonderful oh, design for us as humans to that have that crazy? companionship, know, that partner, to back into the wonderful idea of just marriage itself, and to have a partner in life to co-create. Imagine with. when he woke up when he saw what he saw. Whoa, Whoa. Man. <laughs> man! That is better than any <laughs> giraffe. That is better than a giraffe. <laughs> It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's how you're going to be very successful in the church because you have an open mind and you're able to reach everybody. And that's very, very important to bringing the young people into a church these days. They don't want it to be stuffy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we want to have a very good sense of humor <laughs> in, in his sermon. So uh, yeah, I think you have to. Really. Really. I think into, yeah. yeah. Uh, the community block party over at Druid Hills United Methodist Church is this Saturday. It is a way that the church says thank you yes. to the community yes. for the support. And uh, we say thank you to you. What is what is the Christmas event called? I can't remember. Um, is that the... Well, they have the Easter tableau. The Easter tableau. Yeah, we have the Easter tableau. And in the Easter time, we have a cantata. Mm -hmm. And in recent years, we've been combining with the Bellevue United Methodist Church, the two mm -hmm. choirs, uh, and the con oh, really? cantata is uh, performed at both oh. both uh, churches. Neat. And uh, that's introduce yourself to um, the church. Introduce yourself to Pastor Sanderson. Go to the block party. You'll have a great time. You'll eat for free. You climb the rock wall. Do the twin spin ride. The high striker. The large inflatable dry slide. The choo choo train. The bounce house. The fire truck. The first responders. The cakewalk. The face painting. And the clowns. 
free drinks and food all this Saturday from 2 to 5 p.m. Druid Hills United Methodist Church is at Southeast 17th Street and Lakeware Avenue. Pastor Brian Sanderson, thank you for coming in. Nice to get to know you. And, uh, and John, thank you. John Batten. Thank you. We'll be right back. WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. It just...